Good day, Junior Tuckies, and hello to anybody who might be tuning in. Welcome to this English home language lesson for Grade 8. Today we are going to be looking at parts of speech with a special focus on prepositions and articles, small words that make a large difference. I will be your teacher today. My name is Miss Langtree and this is what I look like. Um, and yes, I'm really looking forward to hopefully imparting some wisdom today. Alright, so let's get started with our prepositions, shall we? Now, I'm sure your um, attention has been drawn to our beautiful model over here. Um, what should we call him? Doug the Pug? Shame. Okay, so he is going to show us how prepositions work, so thank you very much. Um, and let's quickly look at the definition of prepositions before we dive right in. Prepositions show the relationship between two nouns in terms of how they occupy the space. Prepositions help us to understand where something is, and this is important, in relation to another. Okay, here we see the position. So a preposition, okay, shows us the position of one noun as opposed to another. Now what is a noun? Okay, a noun is a physical thing or an abstract thing. I know it's such an awful word, but um, basically it's something whereby you can use your five senses. What are your five senses again? Okay, taste, touch, smell, hear, and see. Did I see see? Anyway, okay, so your five senses can be used on a noun. Okay, um, and yes, it shows the relationship or where they are in relation to one another. That's what a preposition does. Okay, so prepositions include, let's have a read, above, across, against, along, among, around, at, before, behind, below, beneath, beside, between, by, down, from, in, into, near, of, off, on, to, toward, upon, under, with and within. Goodness, so there are a lot of prepositions to choose from and sometimes it can get a little bit confusing, um, but stick with us, I'm sure that we will learn a lot today. So have a look here at the pug, the first example of the pug. The pug is on the table. Can you help me point out the nouns please? Okay, pug is one and table is the other one. Those are the two nouns in the sentence. Okay, the pug and the table. The preposition is helping me understand that the pug is on the table. He's sitting on the table. Okay, his little feet are on the table over there. Okay, what else could I use? I'm just looking at um, my examples over here. I could say above the table, but that implies that the pug isn't really um, sitting on the table. It's almost hovering above the table, which is a terrifying thought, flying pugs. Um, around, at, before, behind, below. No, on is the most appropriate word. Okay, upon. I place the pug upon the table. You could say upon. Okay, you could say that one. Anyway, let's move on to our next example. The pug is underneath the table. Note, nothing else in these sentences is changing. Okay, the only thing that is changing are the prepositions. So, let's have a look here. Underneath the table. Do you see how this pug is now moved? Okay, and his position in relation to the table has changed. That is what prepositions are all about. They help us see how one noun is in relation to another. Okay, so he's underneath the table. Besides, we could say beneath. He's beneath the table. He's below the table, we could say. He is not above the table. He is not down. Near, he is quite near the table. Okay, so a lot of prepositions, you just have to choose the most appropriate one for you. Often you can, you do have a range of prepositions to choose from. Okay, let's have a look at this one over here, the third example. The pug is next to the table. Here's the table, okay? And as you can see, absolutely correct, this pug is sitting next to the table. Okay, perhaps I could also say... 
um, against the table, I could say, um, around the table, at the table, he could be at the table. Um, if he was behind the table, where would he be? He would be on the other side. Hey, okay, he'd be on the other side of the table, behind the table. Okay, so I hope that this this helps you just to, to get a clearer picture of what a preposition actually is. Please write down the different types of examples of prepositions. Right, it's all well and good for me to say prepositions show the relationship and then to send you on your merry way. But we are in high school now, so we do need to unpack it a little bit more. But in a test, if you say preposition, it is correct. But just note that prepositions can show the relationship between nouns in a variety of different ways. For example, prepositions can show the position of a noun. Okay, we know that. So where are the nouns? Here is one. The lamp, right? Where's the other noun? The lamp beside the desk shone brightly. Shone is a verb. You shine. You shine bright like a diamond, don't you? And then brightly is an adverb. Look at our other videos if you, if you didn't pick that up. Okay? So the desk, yeah. Desk is our other noun here. So the lamp beside the desk shone brightly. Perfect. That is our preposition. Okay, now I know exactly where the lamp is in relation to the desk. The river near my house is flooding. Is flooding is the verb. Okay, river is a noun and house is a noun. Okay, so the preposition is near. Where is the river? It's near my house. Okay, perfect. Number two, prepositions can show a noun's movement. Okay, so let's have a look at these sentences. I waded through the water to climb over the bank. Okay, let's um, start with locating our nouns because we can't decide if there's a relationship between the two nouns. Look over here at this picture, by the way. See the relationship between the two nouns, okay? <laughs> um, if we don't know where the nouns are. So I is definitely it's a pronoun, but it's still a noun, okay? I waded, that's a verb, okay, I waded, it means to, to go through slowly. I waded through the water to climb over the bank. Water is a noun. Can you use your five senses on water? To climb over the bank, yeah, bank is a noun. By bank, I think that they mean um, a river bank. They don't mean a standard bank, okay. <laughs> right, here are our nouns. Okay, so is there a relationship? I waded through the water. Yes, that helps me understand. He didn't wade above the water or under the water. He waded through the water. Okay, to climb over the bank. Yep, that's another preposition, folks. Okay, because he, this is the, what he's doing. Okay, this is what this noun here is doing. I went through the water and climbed over the bank. Okay, so those prepositions are showing us the movement of this noun. I swam across oceans for you, and you would not stop step onto a puddle for me? Shame. Hey, um, it's tough out there <laughs> for this person. Okay, so let's find the nouns. All right, so I, once again, is a noun. Pronouns count as nouns in this preposition sort of conversation. Okay, so I swam. What swam? Yep, it's a verb, okay. Across oceans, can I use my five senses on the word ocean? Yes, I can definitely do that. Okay, so I swam across oceans for you. Another noun. And you would not step, step is a verb, onto a puddle. Puddle is a noun for me. Me is a noun. Okay, we've got a lot to work with here. Okay, I actually should not have made this bold. I should have made you work for it and try and figure it out yourself. But I've highlighted all of the prepositions, which was very bad of me. I'm, spoiled. I'm spoiling you. But anyway, okay, so I swam across oceans. Okay, I and oceans, it's showing the relationship. It's showing how they are in relation to the space. He's going across the ocean, okay? And you would not, you, how did I miss you? 
you would not step onto a puddle for me. So now it's, because it's and, by the way, that is a coordinating conjunction. This sentence here counts as a sentence on its own that is well balanced and independent. Anyways, let's move on. You would not step onto a puddle for me. So what, so you, okay, and the puddle, we need to find the relationship here. You would not step onto, onto a puddle for me. Okay, so do you see how they can show movement? I hope so. Okay, number three. Prepositions can show the relationship between nouns and time. Let's have a look here. It was before sunset when the animal appeared. And I'm glad that I've used sentences that don't just put the preposition in the middle. The dog was slapped by the cat. Okay, I'm glad that I'm, I'm not doing that because it makes you see that prepositions don't have to be in the middle of a sentence at all. Okay, so it was before sunset when the animals appeared. Okay, it is a preposition, isn't it? When was it? It was before sunset. Okay, at midnight, we will shout Happy New Year. All I did here was I moved at midnight from the end of the sentence. So we will shout Happy New Year at midnight. Okay, to the beginning. Doesn't matter. Okay, so at midnight. Okay, midnight is a noun. Midnight is one of the, it's the subject of a sentence, first of all, or the object of a sentence. Okay, also, you, it's, um, it's a noun, it's an abstract noun, because you can feel when it's midnight, or you can sense when it is midnight. Okay, anyway, so, at midnight, we will shout, shout is verb, happy new year. So, we and midnight are our two nouns here. Okay, so when will we shout? At midnight. Okay, so prepositions are helping us to just know the time. Okay, so during the staff meeting, I was happy. Okay, what's um, a staff meeting is a noun, isn't it? Okay, I attend the staff meeting. Note, if you can put a or the in front of um, a word, it is probably a noun. That's another thing you could say. Okay, um, during the staff meeting, I was happy. Okay, happy is an adjective. Okay, was is a verb. I, okay, is a noun. So during the staff meeting, I was happy. So when were I, when was I happy? I was happy during the staff meeting. Do you see the relationship between the two nouns there? Good. <laughs> and then prepositions can show possession of the nouns. Miss Naidu is the head of English. Okay. So Miss Naidu. Oh, sorry. Head of English. Okay. It's actually showing the relationship between English and the fact that she's the head of it. Okay. That trophy belongs to Vincent. Trophy is the noun. Vincent is the noun. What's going on with the trophy? It belongs to Vincent. Okay, so that's a bit more detail into prepositions, but yes, the main thing is this picture over here, okay, it shows the relationship between two nouns, okay, and how they um, assemble in the space. Alrighty, so let's move on to our next part of speech, which is called an article. And the good news is there's not a lot to remember here. Just note that if you see a, an, and the in a sentence somewhere, okay, you are definitely dealing with an article. So those are the three articles that you get. And the purpose of an article is to introduce the noun. Okay, so please can I have an envelope? Please can I have the notepad? Please can I have a book? Then we've got some fruits at the bottom here. Um, an apple, a pear, 
and the orange. So as you can quite as you can see, um, the way in which we use articles differs from noun to noun, and we're just going to dive into that into uh, a bit deeper, and we're going to go into it with a bit more detail. Okay, so when we are dealing with the words a or an, we are dealing with indefinite articles. Okay, um, they are not specific. Okay, can I please have an apple? It, it, it's not specific in the sense that um, suddenly you don't really mind which apple that you get. Does that make sense? Okay, and then um, a, a and an are, um, oh dear, this is not going well. Let me just catch my bearing. Okay, an is used for vowels. So, what are the vowels in a sentence? Okay, they are a, e, i, o, and u. If a word starts with those letters, it's going to use an instead of a. That's why we say, can I please have an apple, and can I please have a pear, or a, or an orange, okay, because of the, the letters that these words start with, okay? A is used for the consonants, which basically means that A is used for all of the other letters in the alphabet, okay? Um, the only exception is the letter H when it is silent in the word our, Okay, let me switch to drawing mode quickly. So, when it's used, do you see how the word our, the H is silent? It sounds like our, which then again is a vowel. It's a vowel sound, okay? And hence we say, I'll be there in an hour. It's because when we hear it, okay, it sounds better than I'll be here in a hour. Um, for fluent English speakers, it sounds wrong because it sounds like you're matching A with a vowel, which is wrong. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the examples. May I please have an apple? Okay, it implies that this person does not mind which apple you give them, okay? Now, say for example, you're in a nursery or you're working with um, child, small, small babies um, in, uh, in the hospital, you could say, pass me a baby. You don't care which baby. If you're saying pass me a baby, you don't you're not being specific. Okay? You don't mind which baby gets passed to you. You just want to hold a baby. Okay, does that make sense? So it's it's um called an indefinite article because it's not definite exactly what specific noun you want. Okay. Now, when we talk about a definite article, when we're talking about the word the, we are being specific. And that's when it becomes simpler because you think the is definitely that noun that is being specified. Okay, I can give you an example right now. Um, we only have one dog and my, my mother isn't very fond of the dog. Okay, so sometimes if the dog is not behaving itself my mom won't call it candy she'll say the dog peed on the floor and i don't have to question you know which dog she's referring to i know it's candy she's done it again shame she's getting old so when you say the it means that there is we we all know who is being referenced or what is being referenced okay and it is specific to that specific noun so, um, say for example, you've got an essay due, an essay is the noun, um, your teacher can say, where is the essay? She's not asking about a grade five essay that you did on mountains, she's asking about the essay that was due today. Do you see how it's definitely that specific noun? So that's how I remember definite and indefinite. indefinite. Okay, it's because when it's indefinite, it's like, ah... Uh, you know, can I have an apple? You're at an apple orchard. You don't care which apple, you know, that you're going to get. But when it's definite, you use the word the, okay? And then it's suddenly noted that it's for that specific option. Please may I have the apple? There's only one now. Please may I hold the baby, okay? Say, for example, there's parents in the picture. 
you could say, oh, can you just take care of the baby? I've got to run some errands. They're not thinking that it's their baby's friend. They're, they're thinking. Right, now, when we are talking about a definite article, we are definitely, definitely, definitely talking about something that is specific. For example, my family has a dog named Candy. It's the family dog, and when I go and visit and um, something's gone wrong, my mom doesn't refer to her as Candy. She'll refer to her as the dog, specifically if the dog's done something wrong. So she'll say to me, the dog has peed on the floor. I am not questioning which dog in the neighborhood has peed on the floor. I am not questioning um, if it's at the SPCA. I know it's the dog, and it's it's our dog. It's specific. And by her saying the dog, she knows that I know that we're talking about one specific noun. Okay, and that's why it's called a definite article. There are not no ifs or buts about it. Another thing that you could say perhaps is, for example, you've got an SHU next week Wednesday and next week Wednesday comes along and you arrive with nothing in your hands and your teacher says, where is the essay? She is not referring to a grade five essay on mountains that you did for geography. She wants the essay that was due today and she knows that you know. Okay, so that's when we're talking about a definite article and when we use the word the, it's implied that it's specific and it implies that everybody in the room knows what you are referring to. Very different to a and an, which is more general. Let's look at some of the very similar examples on the slide here, um, where it says, please can I have the apple? Okay, now note, there's only one apple. It's this one, okay? And perhaps they don't like red apples, they only want the one green apple. Okay, so it's more specific. May I hold the baby? Think of parents um, who only have one child. If they say, oh, can you hold the baby for a second? I'm just going to run out. Everybody knows what noun is in question. It's the baby. It's the only one in that house. Okay, so it's a definite article. Very, very different to can I hold a baby? Because that just means, oh, I don't mind. I'll hold any baby. Okay, or I'll have any apple. So do you see how it's so, such a small word, but it really does make a major difference in the sentence. Okay, so a, an, and the. Those are your articles. And this uh, marks the end of the video. Thank you so much for learning about prepositions and articles with me today. I sure do hope that it was helpful. Uh, keep an eye out for the question and answer session, which we are going to do, which is going to cover um, prepositions and articles, but also all the parts of speech that we have covered so far. The next video is going to be on idiophones, um, otherwise known as onomatopoeia depending what school you go to. And also we will be touching on interjections as well. And then that will be the last of our language um, part of speech section. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you again for watching. See you soon.